Mm-hmm. So what's your name? What's your date of birth? What's your social? What's your address? What's your phone number? Yeah. When did you get married? What's up everyone, welcome to another podcast episode. This one is super, super close to my heart because I and Andrew, who's my immigration lawyer for my green card case, uh, who's the guest of this podcast episode, we go through entire detailed steps of my green card journey. Uh, we also talk about when you have to hire an immigration lawyer, if you need to hire an immigration lawyer, what to do, what not to do, documents, interview, mock interviews, the day of interview, what is after interview, when do you get green card, after green card interview, 10, 10 years, 2 years, citizenship, almost everything I can think of, I have tried asking him in this podcast episode. If you still have questions, please let us know in the comment section and we'll try to do a follow-up a video and a podcast episode on the questions topic. But Andrew is also super kind and generous. Uh, Andrew mentioned to me that, hey, if any of the UD squad wants to hire me as an immigration lawyer for your green card, so any of you want to hire him, he's going to give you $200 discount. I don't get to make any money out of this. Uh, He's just saying that, hey, because you are sending audience my way and if they want to hire me and if they like my services, I'll offer them $200 discount. So there we go, sweet deal. Uh, You just have to make sure when you root do reach out to him you need to let him know that you are coming through me just let him know that hey i watched your video with yuri and you know can i get 200 dollars discount last but not least if you do find this content meaningful and valuable please uh, comment and let us know because that helps me and inspires me to make this meaningful content for you guys also if you haven't subscribed subscribe like share uh, with anybody who might be needing this information but now I will let you enjoy the conversation. Thank you, Andrew, for doing this. Really means a lot to me. And you saw like a lot of my audience wants to talk to you and kind yeah. of know behind the scene of my green card journey. And that's why I thought like maybe let's do a quick podcast slash video and we can talk about how it all works. So thank sure. you for coming. Of course. Yeah. Happy to do it. It was very, it's a pleasure to help you. You were a great client and it is an honor to help you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Before uh, we do anything, let's do a quick intro. Like what do you do and just something about you so that audience have a context of, you know, what we can talk about. Sure. Yeah. So my name is Andrew Hawley. I'm from San Francisco. I came up to Chico in 2011 and I've been doing immigration law since 2011. Uh, I, I went back to San Francisco for two years and was trained by an immigration attorney in San Francisco for a couple of years. Nice. And I went down to LA and ran a deportation defense practice in downtown LA for a year. Oh, wow. Then came up to Chico and started my own immigration practice while taking over the day-to-day operations of a criminal defense attorney here in Chico. Mm. So I've been running my own uh, immigration practice here in Chico for about, since 2014, so it's about seven years here. Wow, okay, okay. I didn't know about the deportation one. How was that? Like, was it did you deport a lot of people? Well, I try to stop the deportation of a lot of people. Oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to deport anybody. Yeah. Uh, my motto is bring them in and keep them in. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and so, no, I, I like to keep people in the United States. And I feel a big sense of victory keeping them nice. in the United States. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I want to talk about, uh, you know, my immigration journey, but mainly how does a green card work based on marriages? Because I have a lot of friends and also, you know, a lot of my audience who are immigration student, mainly who would want to pursue this route. So right. they want to know what are like the steps and is there any prerequisite before they get married, like they should think about or anything or how, how do they get started once they decided, proposed and they are set the date? Right. Yeah. So your case is a great case. It's yeah. a very kind of bread and butter garden variety case that I do for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. especially since I'm here in Chico and Chico has a big university here in town. Reading in the town north of here also has a big university. But uh, the key for somebody like you Mm -hmm. is getting into the United States legally. Right. Uh, That's the key. Once you're in, you got it made. Yeah. Uh, Getting in the United States legally is the first step. Yep. Finding a U.S. citizen petitioner, U.S. citizen spouse, husband or wife, yep. is a second step. Right. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit tricky. I get this question all the time, uh, you know, because people want to know, 
well, when should my spouse petition for me? Yeah. And, you know, if you don't want to fall out of status at any point, your spouse should petition for you right away mm. for the green card. Mm. Uh, and you don't even have to wait for your student visa to run out. Right. You know, you can become a, a permanent resident of the United States as soon as your wife petitions for you and as soon as you go through that green card process and go for the interview. And that's uh, after marriage. And that's after marriage. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's after marriage because yeah. the green card based on marriage is right. based on being married to a U.S. citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is no such rule that you cannot go from F1 to green card. Yeah, no, there's nothing preventing you. Right. So, you know, let's say you come here on an F1 and mm -hmm. it's your freshman year of college and your first night at, in, in the United States, your first night on college campus, you go out, you meet a girl, and the very next day you decide you want to get married, and you go and get married. She can petition for you the very next day after that, and you can start the green card process as a freshman at your college or university. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't want to wait, right. uh, you are in a little bit different position in yeah. that you had OPT. Yeah. But the key is you don't have to leave if you don't want to. Right. Right. You will fall out of legal status eventually mm -hmm. if you don't have OPT. Yeah. Or if you run out of OPT, right. you will fall out of legal status, but. If, if you're willing to live out of status, that's okay, because the key, again, is entering the United States legally. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. And staying out of trouble with the police. Right, right. Yeah. Once they are married, once they decide it's spouse and they, like, you know, my spouse is going to petition for me, when, one, do you need immigration lawyer? And if you do, what should they look for? Yeah. So... You know, I tell people this, um, you're a smart guy, your wife is a smart girl, and, and you know how to fill out forms, right? And <laughs> filling out forms is really the easy part. You know, you've, you download a form, yeah. you fill it out, no big deal. Um, the difference is, you know, knowing which forms you need to mail. Yeah. And also, holding somebody's hand along the way is a very important Right. component as well yeah because you're going to have questions along the way yeah you're not going to be sure what's going to happen you're getting paperwork in the mail mm. you don't know if you were supposed to respond you know what you don't know what you're supposed to do on top of that the key a big about half the value of that i provide is preparing you for the interview mm. bringing you to, bringing you to my office like i did yeah yep. sitting you down actually we did it twice because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we were supposed to get we were supposed to have your interview then it got canceled right because of covid yeah. but bringing you into my office and kind of doing the role playing that we did yeah. in that I played the immigrant part of the immigration officer and we went through all the questions that they were yeah. going to ask. Yeah. And I think they actually asked all the questions that they did. They did. Yeah. And then the last part is actually being in the office with you during the interview. Yes. That you was, know, yeah. the value that I provide, right. You know, sitting right next to you yeah. during the interview and also entering the building. Yeah. You know, you guys are jittery. You guys yep. are nervous. Yep. It's like, don't worry about it. I'm here with you yeah. and I've done this couple hundred times right so I got you yeah. you know I'm here to hold your hand yeah so the way I kind of think about it is it's kind of like insurance yeah right you can do it on your own yeah you can give it a shot on your mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. but what happens if something goes wrong right right, right. Yeah. so the fee that you pay to me is insurance and it's peace of mind right totally and you know some people like you yeah you know relax and yeah. feel comfortable <laughs> and confident Knowing that you have the peace of mind right. in, of, an, of an immigration attorney who's experienced. Some people still are jittery, yeah. and, you know, and, yeah. but I'm here if they need to call me yeah. and if they have worries and concerns. Some people have a lot of worries and concerns, and they call me every day yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the next year while we're waiting. Some people call me once every three months, and that's right. great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think one of the big things was when you were with us in that interview, what to expect even before going into it. So like, right. you know, your gesture, like, oh, this is, you know, don't worry about it. It's, it's chill. So You're talking about when the immigrant, when I yeah. saw the immigration officer yeah, yeah, and yeah. called your name and I gave you the thumbs up <laughs> yeah, behind yeah. my back. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. And that immigration officer, uh, he was a little, like, he was very nice, but he was very straight face. Right, yeah. Right. But and you would get scared looking as like, oh. Right. So if you guys didn't know, you guys probably would, would have been Be worried nervous, and scared yeah. and nervous. Yeah. But like I, I let you know that this guy is actually very chill and very yeah. cool. Awesome. So let's say they decided, uh, you know, they want to go ahead. What are the petitions you need to file for this, uh, for green card? I know we did two, but you can do three for travel as well. Right. Yeah. So the main petition is the I-130. Mm -hmm. That's the marriage visa petition. Yeah. The second 
form is the, the, uh, the application for adjustment of status, the I-485. Okay. Yeah. The third one is a work permit, right. the I-765. Yeah. And the fourth one is the I-131. That's the application for uh, petition, uh, application for travel, for permission to travel. Okay. And I don't like to do those. Right. Uh, because I don't like people leaving the United States while well, uh, well, their green card yeah. is in process. Yeah. And certain clients, they kind of fight back on me and they push back on me. And I'll tell them, look, you know, it, you are ultimately the client. You you have done your research. You know about it. Yeah. But I'm telling you from experience. Right. I hear horror stories all the time. <laughs> so if you go out there, you're on your own. Yeah. I might not be able to bring you back in. But yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And what about EAD employment authorization? Do you file separately or is that? No, we apply for that along with it. Oh, the okay. I seven sixty five. It's in you know the application packet about that thick. Yeah. And uh, that's included. There's no fee for that. Right. And the law says that you're supposed to get that three months after immigration receives your application. Yeah. But in reality, it takes about five months. Yeah. I don't know how long it took you, but. Yeah, I don't. I think it took six, seven months. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably also due to. Well, I don't know if that was due to COVID, but uh, well, that was due to Trump because right. Trump was a president. Yeah, when, that, yeah. that was Trump. Right. And yeah. we, we had a lot of problems with work permits yeah. during yeah. the Trump years. Yep. And w talking about timeline, uh, what are once we do file the petition, once we mail it, what are the timeline? What's the timeline we are looking? Is it one year, two years? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, right now, it, everything is up in the air. Yeah. Under Obama, uh, it was four and a half to six months mm. from the time that you put the application in the mail. Wow, to that the time quick. of the interview. Yes, wow. four and a half to six months. Okay. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was so nice. Yeah. Uh, under Trump, that time slowly got expanded right. to about a year. Yeah. Uh, and then um, since COVID hit, yeah. I mean, yours was just a couple of days past two years. Right. Two years. Not your fault, not my fault. Yeah. Uh, not even Trump's fault uh, <laughs> for once. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it. it's two years. Now, I'm, I'm, Biden's, you know, cleaning up this process and streamlining, streamlining things. Mm. So mm. I think that the process is going to go a little bit, a little bit faster, maybe a year and a half. Mm. Talking about documents, uh, because I know, I know we prepare a lot of documents. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the documents uh, couples should keep in mind? I think there's two. One is showing the relationship, but then also showing that you're living together. So like, yeah. what are some of those evidences which you need to start collecting once you are married? Right, good. Yeah, so you, you hit the nail on the head there. There's kind of two kind of personal documents. I mean, of course, you need your marriage certificate, your birth yeah. certificates, passports, all that stuff. But um, one key is showing that you guys are actually in love and doing things together. Mm. So this means like, trips that you guys are traveled yeah. to inside the United States. Mm -hmm. You guys have stayed at a hotel room, gone, gone to Vegas, mm -hmm. gone to LA, gone to San Francisco. Yeah. Kind of photos that you guys have taken. Photos aren't necessarily the strongest, but they do help. Right. But like if you have email itineraries and receipts that you got for air travel, mm. things like that, oh, that's very helpful. Okay. Uh, the other thing is showing that you guys are living together as right. husband and wife. Right. And so I tell clients, uh, oftentimes, as soon as we put the application in the mail, uh, start start generating some paperwork. Mm. Start generating some proof to show so when the time comes for your interview that all you have to do is print it up. Yep. So what do I mean generating paperwork? Uh, tax returns, yeah. W-2s, right. car insurance, health insurance, life insurance, yeah. renter's insurance, yeah. uh, Wi-Fi bills, cre credit card bills, yeah. uh, titles to property, titles to car, mm. all, these kinds of th all these kinds of things. You're going to want to put both of your names on them. Your name and your wife's name, right? And you're going to want to keep the same address, yeah. And uh, print those up, you know, trash, water, mm -hmm. uh, PG&E, all these kind of bills that you know everybody gets hit with yeah. just living here in the United States. <laughs> yeah, and it's insane. Yeah. But uh, you want to you want to print those up, and then you know, even if you didn't do that during the year while you were waiting for your interview, mm -hmm. uh, what I tell people when they come to my preparation appointment at my office for the interview is I tell them to go home. And start creating some profiles. Start adding each other's names to the thing, mm -hmm. to the utility bill or to yeah. the lease or yeah. to whatever. Then yeah. print it up and bring it with you. Yeah. 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 And I know that you also need to do medicals, which I needed to do twice <laughs> in right. my case. Is that something mandatory or can you get it done from somewhere in India or like, but you have, is that, what? what's the deal with? Uh, yeah. So for the medical examination, um, 
they, you have to sh it's primarily x-rays, a little blood sample, and sometimes they have you pee in a cup or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but it's for tuberculosis. That's why they do the x-rays. Mm. But um, I would tell people to bring all your proof of your shots and your vaccines oh, that you've yeah. received elsewhere. Because yes. if you don't have any of that proof yeah. and you go to a doctor's appointment, they may say, well, you don't have the proof. And if you want us to fill out the form, you're going to have to get all the shots, mm. even if you've had even if you've had them in the past. Yeah. These doctors, they're doctors um, at the same time. Right. They have bills, they have families, and yeah. they are in the business of making money. Yeah. So they will charge you $1,000 at times Yeah. if you don't have all the proof of your shots. Right. So I would recommend taking the proof of previous shots to mm. that medical examination. Mm. So you say, here, I have my shots. I only need these things. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you don't pay for a whole bunch of things that you don't need. Right. Now, the medical examination is definitely mandatory for yes. this, to get your green card. There's yeah. no way around it. Yeah. However, uh, the way I did things kind of switched under COVID. Mm. What we we mailed your application for your green card before COVID hit. Yes. So we mailed your application along with the medical examination. Yeah. Because we were assume with 99 percent confidence that you would get called for your interview right. before your medical examination was going to expire. Yeah. And that's based on my history, my experience. Yeah. However, nobody expected COVID to hit. Yeah. And so you're, unfortunately, your, your medical examination expired and you had to go do it yeah. again. Uh, you know, I feel bad for that, right. but nobody could have expected that no. to happen. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, all you had to do was go back and maybe you guys were able to sweet talk them and get yeah. a discount. <laughs> you will most likely receive EAD or employment card before your interview. Yes. That doesn't really always mean, because a lot of people have this misconception once they get it, they tell their employer that they don't want H-1B anymore. Right. Yeah, which I don't think people should do it, but what, no. what would you say? No, I because your H you, you are still here on H-1B status. Yes. Now, your H-1B status is what gives you the work permit and what is what allows you to stay in the United States. Yeah. You're allowed to stay in the United States as long as your work permit is valid as well. Right. But I would tell your employer, you know, or I would tell the client or whoever is here on H-1B, don't tell your client that, or don't tell your employer that you don't need H-1B anymore. Yes. Because yeah. what happens if, heaven forbid, something went they wrong. deny your green card, Yeah. your your wife falls off a cliff or something, or yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. something horrible happens. So uh, yeah, don't don't go to your employer right. and tell them you don't yeah. need your H-1B yeah. anymore. No, don't do that. Right. So once you do get EAD, then, you know, all the notes, the case will be updated online. And then you get, receive the final thing, which is your interviews scheduled and ready and right then, you know, mock interview happens, right, with you. Right. Uh, what generally, do, like, uh, what kind of questions do you help practice? Uh, right, yeah. So I tell my clients, you know, I, I, this is what we did. Yeah. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But, you know, I tell my clients, I bring them in the office, and I, I kind of lay it out how it's going to go. Yeah. You know, from start to finish, what, what time do you want to wake up? Yeah, I know. You know? Yes, yeah. And you, you, ran, you were uh, running a little bit late yeah, that day, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I watched your other video. <laughs> yeah. And I tell them where to park or where to look for parking. Yeah. Uh, how long it's going to take to walk to the front door. Yeah. And then we got there just in time because there was a line around the block. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and I was already upset when we got there because there was a line out the door. Right. But I told you guys, you know, arrived there a half hour early and we should be safe. Uh, you know... We were fortunate in that everybody was late that yeah. day. But, uh, you know, as far as the questions, you know, I tell them that they're going to take out the red pen. Yes. Don't be afraid of red pen. Red yeah. pens are usually bad. Don't right. be afraid of the red pen. Yeah. And they're going to ask you the questions that are this very same questions that are on the form. Yeah. That's usually how they get started. Mm -hmm. So what's your name? What's your date of birth? What's your social? What's your address? What's your phone number? Yeah. When did you get married? How did you, uh, uh, where do you work? Yeah. How long have you been working there? How long have you been living there? Yeah. Uh, when did you enter the United States? Yeah. Uh, how did you enter the United States? Where did you enter the United States? What's your status right now? Where do you go to school? And they kind of just go through all those questions and right. they just mark the paper with a red yeah. pen every time that they do that. Yeah. yeah. And then they kind of switch modes. Yeah. And I think this is what they did with you. Yes. Yeah. And they say, okay, so uh, how did you guys meet? Yeah. yeah. And where did you meet? Right. And this is as much for immigration to... I mean, they're not trying to get any answers from you. Right. They they just want to see how you guys interact. Mm. They mm. don't really care what the answers are. Right. <laughs> they just want to see if you're how you 
how you are with your wife, right. your rapport with your wife, yeah. or with your husband. Yeah. They want to see, you know, we met on <laughs> July 4th, 2021 at a party. Uh, it was my cousin's party. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Like, none of that crap. They want to see how you guys touching each other. Yeah. You know, are there little jokes? Yeah. And typically, where couples are really married and stuff like that, they, they, they have little jokes between themselves. Right, right. It was Ben's party. It wasn't Ben's party. I'm telling you, it was Ben's party. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was drinking a beer. I was drunk. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, you were hitting on me. Yeah, of course I was hitting on you. I was drunk. <laughs> what do you mean you were drunk? I'm not cute enough for you to, you know, and they're going to see that kind of stuff yeah. back and forth with you guys. Yeah. When you guys are doing during the interview, yeah, and they just want to see how you guys are during that. Mm. You know, of course, you got to wear your wedding ring, yeah. But uh, and so they just kind of ask you those questions, yeah. And then when they're done with those questions, they just say, "So, do you have any other paperwork here with you?" Mm. And uh, that's where you present the paperwork, right? But yeah, so you know, these questions—they're not asking these questions because they want to know the answers. They already know the answers to all the questions on the form, yeah. But they, they, you know, these people. They're not lawyers, okay, yeah. uh, but they are skilled at what they do, right. and they know what they're doing, yeah. and they can spot a phony case a mile away. Mm. So they just want to see mm. you guys. If and, it's not a fake matter. Yeah, if it's not a fake case, yeah. they're going to know. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that's, that's what they're very skilled at. Right, right. So once the interview is done, uh, how long does it typically take to get the stuff? Yeah, two to four weeks. Two to four weeks, yeah. yeah. Unless you... Unless in my case, you know, I had to resubmit. Right, uh, right. Unless you got to go to the medical examination. Yeah. But yeah, so we submitted the, the, the new medical examination for you like two weeks ago or a week ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you should be getting your green card in the mail like two to four weeks from now. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be good. Yeah. And also they don't really tell you in the interview if it is all clear or not. They kind of make you, they still make you you know think that right. it's not approved <laughs> right. it's like oh i i don't know who's going to review it i have my supervisor to review this right. so you're like wait it's not done yet it's yeah. not approved yet under obama it was awesome because they would give you a piece of paper and it would say congratulations at the top and oh. they check that box and say congratulations welcome to the united states right. you're now a permanent resident and it was like great awesome yeah uh under trump they stopped doing that altogether yeah also under obama and prior administrations you know if there were any kind of tricky issues mm -hmm. in it they they'd say thank you for coming but that would almost always lead to a green card mm -hmm. but now they don't ever give the piece of paper that says congratulations yeah they always say uh thank you for coming i gotta talk, check with my superior yeah you'll hear from us in the mail yeah and it's like ah oh, <laughs> yeah what the heck like yeah no no shaking hands no congratulations right and they I tell people don't feel bad. Yeah. Don't don't be worried. Right. They don't ever do that anymore. So yeah. just relax. Yeah. And it'll be approved. Yeah. 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 You still want to have a conversation, mm -hmm. but don't go on these long rambling answers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unless you see that the immigration officer is really enjoying your story. Mm. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I say just keep your answers nice and short, very right. sweet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, that that's one little thing that I that I. Yeah, and also I think I remember you when we did the mock interview, you made us practice this uh, these questions where all the answers are basically no. Right. And you told me that there, there's going to be a time where, where he's just going to keep asking you these questions yeah. and all you have to just say is no, no, no. Right, right. And then you, like, I, I know that you mentioned, like, some people like, uh. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, on the green card application, the I-45, there's about 80 questions that are yes or no. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there's only one question on there that is a yes. Mm. But even when you answer that question yes, it doesn't really hurt you. And I, I'm speaking in a general case, yeah. like yours. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so you don't want to be in the situation where they're saying, uh, uh, so uh, have you ever been to a prostitute? You don't want to go like, hmm. Does that include this? No. <laughs> No, yeah. and so what I tell people is you want to go on a no roll. You yeah. want to roll out your nose. Yeah, yeah. No, no, confident, strong, fast. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, 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 right. no. What are, what are some of those examples? I can't remember, but I know you did it with me. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you a Nazi? Have you ever hurt anybody? Uh, do you have any problems with police? Have you ever been in jail? Have you ever sold drugs? Have you ever made drugs? Have you ever transported drugs? Yeah. Have you ever worked in a prison? Have you ever worked in a... In a a military institution okay. have you ever been in the military have you ever been discharged from military have you ever hurt anybody have you ever pro visited a prostitute have you ever been a prostitute yourself have you ever gambled right and so you don't want to be like 
No. Yeah. No? I don't think so. No. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be like that. Yeah. You want to have all your nose just re- no, 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 no. Yeah. No. Even on the gambling question, I can see people like, I went to Vegas. Is that? <laughs> Is no, that? screw that. You don't <laughs> even want to bring that up. Like, that's not what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and for some people, like a small little speeding ticket. Yeah. You know, they do ask you if you have any traffic Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you do want to have that lined up. Yes, I got a traffic ticket in 2012. I paid for it, took care of it. It's all done. Yeah. And they, they want your answers hard and fast. Yeah. Confident, hard, fast. Right. What happens once you have the green card? Like, uh, do you get it for two years? Because there's this confusion between two years, 10 years, and then when can you apply for citizen citizenship if you right. want to? Right. So if, if you've been married for less than two years, mm-hmm. When immigration receives your green card application, mm. you will get a green card that is good for two years. Okay. Okay. And so what happens is before those two years are up, you have to mail another application to immigration. A window opens three months before those two years are up. Right. And you have to mail another application to immigration mm. showing that you and your wife are still married and still living together and everything is still beautiful. Right. When you That's called an I-751. Yeah. And you have to, it's kind of like a baby green card application. Mm. You have to mail them a bunch of proof, some, a declaration, some forms, pay a fee. And they don't typically schedule you for, a, for an interview for that. And if they approve that, you will get a, a new green card that's good for 10 years. Mm. Mm. Um, but you have to mail that application to immigration before your green card is going to expire. They have to receive it. Yeah. Before your two-year green card is going to expire. Right, okay. And so uh, what I tell people is don't wait until, the, until that three-month window opens. Mm. What you want to do is you want to start working on it mm. before the three-month window opens. Yeah. So the minute that window opens, all you have to do is put that puppy in the mail, yeah. that, that green card application. <laughs> right, right. So you're taken care of. Yeah. Then what immigration will do is you, your green card is going to expire, and you're going to be like, what the heck? My green card expired. Do I have to leave the country? No, you don't have to leave. There's... The okay. receipt notice that they're going to mail you is also going to be an extension notice right. for your green card for one year. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. And so if it takes more than a year for them to renew your green card, they'll mail you another one. Mm. So I tell people, a lot of people, uh, when they get this, they're like, okay, well, what, happened? what if I need to leave the country? Right. I say, no problem. You take your passport, your expired green card, mm. and that extension notice with you if mm. you need to leave the country mm. when your green card is expired. Mm. Um, so, you know, so what happens in the case of like mine where, or similar to mine, where when we applied, uh, we were not married for two years, but when we gave the interview, we crossed three years. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's interesting. Yeah. Because I have another client who is in your exact same situation. Yeah. Who I went to the green card interview with them, uh, last week mm. or two weeks ago, right after yours. And uh, they got a 10-year green card. Oh, okay. So you might get a 10-year green card. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was a very same situation. Exactly the same. Right. Except he was uh, a U.S. citizen and his wife was from Mexico. And she entered, she entered the United States legally. Okay. Um, but they had been married for less than two years mm. at the time when they applied for the green card. Right. And uh, But right before their interview was going to... In fact, we got an interview appointment notice. Yeah. And then it got canceled mm-hmm. for a year and a half. Yeah. And so it's been like three and a half years since they've been married. Right. And they got their green card in the mail today. Yeah. I talked to them today. Oh, nice. And they got a 10-year green card. Wow. So that's less work for you. You, yeah. got, you get to save yourself $680 in filing fees. Yeah. Plus, you know, whatever you want to pay to an attorney if you want to do, have an attorney do that for you. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think you're going to get a 10-year green card. So awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And then when can you apply for citizenship if you want to? Yeah. So you can apply for citizenship uh, two years and nine months after you get your green card. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't have to wait the three years. Okay. Uh, typically, you know, the answer is three years. Okay. So three years from the date that you that says on your green card. Oh, okay. Because okay. on your green card, it will say uh, resident since... July 1st, 2021. Right. So that would mean that you could apply for your citizenship okay. on July 1st, 2014, three years later, 2024. Yeah. Three years later. Yeah. But uh, you can actually apply a little bit early. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you need immigration law for that or is that straightforward? Uh, again, you know, it's it's insurance policy. Right. You know, okay. uh, if you want to know how it's going to go, 
if you want if you want the confidence of having an attorney there. You know, for for you where there's no criminal issues or no criminal issues yet, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't plan on doing right, anything. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, you don't necessarily need an attorney. It's a form, and the citizenship is significantly easier. It's just one form, okay, and just very basic supporting documents. Right. And you know exactly how that interview is going to go. They're just going to ask you the exact same questions on the form, mm. and then they're going to ask you the questions about U.S. history and government. Mm. So that's it's pretty simple. Oh. I still get a lot of people who hire me for it yeah, for yeah, good yeah. reason. Yeah. But uh, maybe in three years we'll do it again, and then we can talk more about that in detail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, thank you again so much for doing this. Uh, awesome. It really means a lot to me and my audience. I'm pretty sure our audience will start reaching out to you. So hopefully they'll get some use out of this whole video we did or, you know, if they have any questions or whatever. So thank oh, you again for thank doing you. it. I look forward to it. And until our next one. Keep smiling, keep hustling. <laughs>